Hello, in this video number 5, in the Gemini in Android series, we will see how to stream the response from the Gemini model. Before starting, I want to say that when I was following the documentation to see how to implement the streaming examples, I found a bug and I raised an issue on GitHub to tell the developers about it. Luckily, they fixed the problem and now we just need to wait for the next update. But I was talking to David Motson and he helped me get a solution to the problem without waiting for the next update. So if you are curious, go to the video description and you will find the link that will take you to this issue. This is what we are going to be building in this video. Let me show you how this works. First, I will prepare a prompt. This is my prompt. Tell me how to sleep well. If I click on the send query button, what will happen? The model, instead of giving me the response when it's done generating it, as we did in the first video in this series, it will try to print or show me the chunks while it is generating the response. So let me click on the send query button. And as you can see, the model is generating the response and I, I, am, showing, I am showing it to the user. This is what we call streaming. And this is what we are going to build in this video. So stay tuned. Now let's move to the project setup section. As you can see in the screen, I am pointing you to this repository because I will be using the text only project we covered in the first video. By doing this, we will focus only on the coding part because the design is already there. So clone this repository and let's get started. Open the Gemini Pro class we are going to make some changes to the getResponse method. First, remove the executor because we will not use it. And let's change the content to show the user role instead. So as you can see, we are taking the query and additionally, we are specifying that this is coming from the user. Let's add a string to store the model's response. And now instead of using the generate content method we will use generate content stream this is how we use it so you can see that we change the generate content to generate content stream we pass the content and then we get a publisher that we can subscribe to to get the chunks as well as the full response remove this code block so we don't need it because we will use the subs we will subscribe to the publisher as i said this is how you do it so we use the streaming response variable and then you subscribe. You need to pass a new subscriber. Let's do this. And then you will get some methods. First, we need to subscribe by using this, this line, s.request long dot, dot max value. If you pass just one, this will return just one chunk. But if you want to return the full response, you can give a very big number. And to do this, we are using the max value that comes from the long class. Inside the onNext method, we can get the chunk by using dot get text from this variable that we get as a parameter. Then we can append this chunk to the full response variable. As you can see, we are getting an error. So to solve it, we can return, we can turn this into a final string array, final string, full response and here I will add curly braces. And here instead of using full response, I will take the first element because we have just one element in this array. Okay, so this solved the problem. And I will use the callback method to return the response to the main activity so, we can, so that we can display it to the user. And here, if you want to see the chunk, I can log it for you. Just use the log dot d method to do that if something weird happens the on error method will be called and we are going to return this error by using the callback to handle it in the main activity and finally when we receive the full response the uncomplete method will be called so let's just take let's just show that uh, the uncomplete method was called and let's return the response by using callback.onResponse. Good, we have finished working on the Gemini Pro class. Now, let's go back to the main activity. 
and search for the onResponse method as well as the onError method. Here, to update the views with the chunks that we are receiving from the Gemini Pro class, we need to use the run on new i thread. So let's use it. This is how we use it. Okay, so I'll just remove these two lines and I will put them inside the run on new i thread method. If you don't do this, you will get an error because you will be trying to update the UI from a non-UI thread. Let's do the same here on the onError method. So run on UI thread and let's put that inside. And here I am putting the error inside or I'm showing the error in this text view. Congratulations, that's everything we need to test the streaming. Now run the application and let's see if what we have done will work. Okay, the application is running. Now let's test it. Let's keep the prompt simple and say, hello, how are you? Let's click on the send query button. And oops, as you can see, we are getting an error. So here it is saying, generate content request dot content. Uh, and then it's uh, in the message it says, contents is not specified. This didn't work. This is why I told you in the beginning that there is a bug in the streaming functionality. But what I showed you will work when the developers will update the library. But I promise that I will show you a workaround to make the streaming work. And this is what I will show you in this part. Let's start by creating a Kotlin class. Click on this folder, right click and choose Kotlin class. Let's call it Generative Model Futures Extension. Hit enter. Inside this file, paste the following code. David mentioned to me that the problem is that the prompt was not actually passed to the generate content stream method, leading to the error that we saw. As you can see, we need to install some dependencies because we are using the reactive module and by default, you will not have it in your project. Open your build.gradle file and down below, paste these two lines. Click on sync now. Okay, good. The syncing has been completed. Go back to the generative model futures extension Kotlin class. And as you can see, Android Studio is telling you that you need to configure Kotlin. Just click on the configure button and then OK. Wait for some time and come back to the build.gradle file to change this version of the JVM into the version that you are using in this project. In my case, I will change it to, to use Java 8 because this is what I am using. I'll just wait for this build to complete and then I will do the change. Okay, so here, instead of 17, I will put 1.8. Sync now, and this is the last sync that we need to make. Now close this file and go back to the Gemini Pro class. Here, instead of using this generates content stream that comes directly from the generative model futures. We are going to use our own class. And this is how we are going to do this. Delete this part. Let's call the generative model futures extension companion and call the generate content stream. Here we need to pass first the model and then the content. Believe it or not, this is the only change that we need to make. Now, run the application and enjoy. Okay, the application is running. Let me prepare a question to ask the model. Here is my question. What is the operation torch? Click on the send query. And let's hope that we are going, as you can see, the model is streaming, is streaming the response. And I can scroll through it. And when the chunks are all processed, I will get the food response. Let's test it one more time. Here is the second prompt. Write a 1000 word article on why Earth is a beautiful planet and why we should take care of it. I specified 1000 words just to get a response that is big so that we can see the streaming. Click on the send query. As you can see, the model is generating the 1000 word response. Okay, you can see that the response is still being generated. And this is good. Instead of waiting for, for the full response to be generated, 
we can actually see it in chunks. Good, so this is actually working. We arrived at the end of this tutorial. I hope that it was helpful and I am very happy that I was able to cover most of the examples that are in the documentation. Currently, I am thinking of making another tutorial that shows how to analyze videos using Gemini Pro Vision. So stay tuned for that.